Hey everyone, it's Marianne, and this is my boyfriend Aiden, if you don't already know who he is. Uh, this week we're talking about health, and I figured Aiden should join me on this topic just because I feel like if I was here talking about, you know, trans health and whatever, there would be a lot of trans guys saying, like, you know, you don't know what it's like, you don't know how we feel, so you can't sit here and basically tell us what to do. That's not what I'm doing, but so I figured why not get a more first-hand approach to health. So I'm mostly going to focus on binder... <laughs> you look really mad. <laughs> Talk about binder do's and don'ts pretty much for this video, so... Yeah. Take it away. Yeah, I don't know. There's just a lot of unsafe binding, I feel. And as uncomfortable as it is to have a chest... You have to kind of more think of the long run and how you're damaging. Okay. <laughs> Number one, don't use ace bandages. I'm pretty sure you've all heard that a million times. But it can actually do a lot of damage to your body. And, like, if you can't afford it, I know it sucks. But there's other ways to hide your chest other than using ace bandages. Like, if you have to do it occasionally, then that's what you have to do, but try and do it as least, less as possible if that's the option you're going. Uh, like, button-up shirts or... Layering and... Layering. That can You know, help. a tighter-ish sports bra, maybe. That's what you used to do. Mm -hmm. Or two. Or two. Um, get a proper binder if you can. Um, there's lots of programs out there that will donate binders, like... I think there's binder boys. I haven't really looked at any of that stuff, but you can just look around and you'll find stuff. People um, give them away because they don't need them anymore. Yeah, people give them away after top surgery. Um, people donate them. So if you if you really can't afford it, then uh, look into those. Uh, also, they're not too expensive. Like you can get some for like, well, depending on where you live. Uh, around forty dollars like that sounds like a lot but I mean if you buy a coffee every day from Starbucks if you don't do that for a week or two you'll have enough for a binder so if you put things into perspective like that like I realize there's people who can't afford it but a lot of the times people say they can't afford it and they actually can they just don't budget properly so <laughs> um, so if you can get a proper binder do that if you don't know where to get a proper binder, there's Underworks, there's Tea Kingdom, there's Les Love Boat, there's tons of places to get binder. Underworks are the most popular. Get the binder in your size, don't get the binder that's smaller because they are made to compress you. They are not made... <laughs> you had to get a new one because you bought one too yeah, small. Yeah, I bought one that was too small and it just hurt and I couldn't do it. So buy the one in the right size. If you're in between sizes, get the size that's bigger. <coughs> Um, because if it's too small, it's going to be uncomfortable, and it's going to hurt you. Um, everyone is different, and I realize this. I've had this discussion with many people. Some people can do the things, everything you're not supposed to do, and they'll be fine, but a lot of people get hurt by these things. So if you hear one person say that they've bound with an ace bandage forever and they're fine, maybe they're the lucky exception, or maybe it hasn't hit them yet, but a lot of people do get hurt by these things. Um, which brings me to number two. Don't double bind. Oh. What? That would hurt. Um, it is really bad for you. <laughs> really, really bad for you. Um, I realize some people bind with double bind with old binders, so it's a little bit different because if they're, like, stretched out, I mean, it's still not a good idea, but if they're both stretched out, then it's better for you than using like two brand new binders, which a lot of people do. Um, you also have to realize that like uh, cis men don't have flat flat chests. Like I know you look down and you still see a bump, but like that's normal for for cis men. It'll look more like pectoral muscles than yeah. chest tissue. Like if you don't believe me, just go around and look at guys around you and try not to like get, catch Creep. them like looking at you <laughs> and staring at chest. your chest but their chests aren't flat um so like you don't need to bind twice like if you have a little bit of a bump there still like that's not completely abnormal and I realize everyone's chest sizes are different so 
if you have a really big chest, it might be more than a little bump left, but I'm just speaking from my experience. Um, what else? You cough when you take off your binder? Yeah, coughing when you take off your binder helps, like, I don't remember. Expand rem- things back. Yeah. yeah. It just helps um, move things, and sometimes you get, like, mucus in your chest, and apparently it helps release that. It's been a long time since I read this stuff, so don't quote me on that. But it is good to cough after you've taken off your binder. Try not to wear your binder for more than eight hours because the more you bind, the harder it is on your body. And you might think that that's all great and dandy until it comes down the road and you can't bind anymore, Uh, which is almost at the point where I'm at now. I used to bind with a binder that was too small, and I used to bind all the time, pretty much minimum of 12 hours a day, every day kind of thing. And, like, I can't... Like, I can bind, but it has to be in very limited quantities. I can't do it for more than a few days. Like, it's it's really bad. It feels like I've been hit by a truck. Even when I'm not wearing a binder, I have breathing issues. Like, it is dangerous to do these things. I'm not just saying it just because it's the right thing to say or whatever. Like, these things are actually dangerous to your body. Like look up binder injuries like look them up you can actually warp your rib cage like it's it's very dangerous to to go through like excessive binding and i know a lot of people are like it's worth it because you know like it helps me get through the day but it can only work for so long if you're gonna do it like that and um trust me when i say that like down the road if this is how you've been binding and you do damage your body severely like it's gonna suck a lot more not being able to bind at all than it was to maybe only bind for eight hours like five days a week at the beginning like if you do (laughs) am i just rambling no okay if you're binding like all the time it's it's not good for you and never sleep in your binder. Don't do it ever, ever, ever. Like, if you don't want to listen to anything I've said through this entire thing, listen, listen to, that. to this. <laughs> don't sleep in your binder. Um, it can create serious issues. Like, I'm not a doctor, so I don't know all the medical terms and everything, and I don't know all of the exact stuff because it's been so long since I've looked this stuff up. But don't sleep in your binder. You can create lots of issues. You can stop breathing. You can create, like, significant bruising because you breathe differently in your sleep and you breathe more shallow, so your binder sucks even harder. Uh, So it can create a lot of damage. So if you don't want to take anything out of this entire video, at least take that. Don't sleep in your binder. Uh, Yeah. (laughs) That's eight minutes of me (laughs) rambling. It's important, though. Mm-hmm. I think it's very important. Um, yeah. Is there anything else you want to say? Just seriously, like, look it up. Like, look up. Like, if you don't believe that it can actually create damage, just look it up. Find pictures. Like, some of it's pretty pretty gross, so if you don't have a, a strong stomach, you might not want to actually look. But at I, least look at um, the written stuff if you don't want to look at pictures. I've never actually looked up Binder. It's pretty bad. <laughs> um, yeah. That's all I really wanted to focus on in my video. Um, If you watch, I believe, Emily's video, she talks about other health things like self-exams and downstairs exams, which I'm trying to get you to do, which you're not doing. Um, Yeah, just health in general. Like Emily said, you need to take care of the body that you have. I mean, it sucks that you have that body, but you need to take care of it. So... I think this is very important. I've been trying to push this subject for a while now, so I'm very happy that we're finally doing it. So, yeah, that is all. Thank you for watching. Bye. Bye.